What's up, you guys? Welcome back again to Your Hero Clicks Headquarters. Today, we're going to be continuing our full set review of Notorious with the Rares. And uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. So, starting us off here, we have uh, Polka Dot Man. And uh, if you saw the newer Suicide Squad movie, he was pretty cool in that. So, uh, he did get a rare. I feel like probably just because of that movie is why we have him, but let's see what he can do here. He's got the Gotham City Underworld, Suicide Squad, and Celebrity Keywords. He is a team player. Uh, he's also unique. Just uh, point that out there. And then you've got a trait here that says free. Roll a d6. Turn Polka Dot Man to the resulting click number. So uh, you can just take a free action and turn him to either click number 1, 5, or 9. Uh, that's pretty cool. And then Polka Dot Man takes a maximum of two damage from effects. When Polka Dot Man is KO'd after resolutions, other friendly characters that have the Suicide Squad keyword heal two clicks. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you, you're going to want to get him out of the way quick so he doesn't just heal up their whole team two clicks. Uh, he can fly. That's pretty interesting. I don't know why he's got flight, but uh, then you've got Penetrating Blast, Range Combat Expert, um, or he can do Force Blast and Barrier, or some TK and some Close Combat Expert. He's very versatile for 40 points. Uh, he's also a team player, of course, so he can, you know, copy different team abilities. Um, and when he does take two damage, you know, he'll pretty much almost always take two, right? So he'll end up either with Prob here, Energy Shield and Running Shot, or some... Uh, in cap and perplex so pretty cool um i would say i'd probably start him off either on the tk or the barrier i mean it doesn't really matter you can turn him to the other click anyway and if because if your opponent doesn't finish him off right away the cool thing is you just take that free action roll a die turn him to another click so yeah it is kind of random though you can't like choose i guess if you want tk or barrier so you probably want to start on the one you're going to want <laughs> and then uh, you know, switch if you need to. But yeah, I mean, 10 attack, 1 damage, penetrating range combat expert, not bad. He can do some damage that way. He's a pretty nice little support figure all in all. He definitely takes uh, a little work to KO because he's going to take at least 2 hits. And, um, you know, if they don't do it right away, he's going to heal up your whole team on top of everything. So all in all, he's pretty decent. He's nothing crazy, but uh, he is a lot of fun. But up next, we have Black Manta. And again, this guy is coming straight out of the... Uh, animated series the super friends or whatever he's like the old school cartoon black manta so injustice league legion of doom secret society super villains suicide squad assassin and pirate keywords he's also a team player which is nice you got unique modifier free if black mana occupies or is adjacent to water terrain roll a d6 all friendly characters with the swim ability modify the listed combat values matching the number on the d6 by plus one until your next turn so on a three or four, they get plus one attack. On a five, they get plus one damage. On a six, they get plus one attack and damage, which across your whole team of people with swim ability is very powerful. Uh, he's coming in at 90 or 45 points, and he does have a special attack power. Uh, well, first of all, he's got another trait here. It says, when a friendly character with swim hits a single equipped opposing character, they may choose to deal a maximum of one damage to that target. If they do, they may equip any equipment equipped to the hit target. That's very cool. I mean, just this guy is going to make swim team so strong for the fact that they can steal equipment like pirates or something. And uh, then, you know, he's just buffing their stats every turn as long as you roll, you know, decently enough. And then on top of that, he's got energy explosion, precision strike and knockback. This dude's a beast and sealed because of that special power. You know, you can get a ton of damage in that way. And, uh, yeah, you know, you play him with a couple of his goons. You can be giving them all plus one attack and damage, potentially. Pretty cool. Uh, even for 45, you know, he's got side set, perplex, and that special attack power. Otherwise, he's got some leadership, some invuln, running shot. Pretty cool. I like him a lot. Uh, I think he's definitely worth thinking about when you're building any teams of swimmers because he does bring a lot to a team. If they all have swim ability, you know, buffing all their stats, leadership, he's a good ranged attacker himself, he's a wild card. 
uh, and being able to make them all, you know, have the ability to steal equipment basically is pretty awesome. So I think he's got some kind of niche uses there. He'd be a lot better on some type of, you know, just a team with all swimmers, maybe unthemed or something. Um, you know, maybe pirate or something. I'm not really sure. Probably better off on that type of team than he would be on just like, you know, Injustice League or Legion of Doom or something. Uh, it'd be nice if he had some other keyword like Atlantis or I don't know, something. I, I don't, I don't think it really make a lot of sense, but Hey, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be a better team for him. If he had ruler, that'd be really cool. Cause you could team him with Aquaman and everything. I don't know. But anyway, he's pretty good. But moving on next, we have another swimmer here, the killer croc. And this dude looks pretty freaking sweet. I love the sculpt on him. He looks like freaking Hulk or something with the purple shorts. Oh man, and he's just a big green Hulk looking dude. I don't know, but uh, anyway, here we go. He's got, of course, the Batman enemy team ability, Arkham Asylum, Gotham City Underworld, Secret Society of Supervillains, Suicide Squad, Animal, Assassin, and Monster keywords. Gotta love Animal, Assassin, and Monster right now. Uh, so he's got a trait. When placing characters during setup, if you're not the first player, you may place Killer Croc up to six squares from your starting area. If you do, generate four water terrain markers anywhere on the map. So you're going to probably want to put one under him to start with unless uh you know you're on an all water map which you probably want to be if you're going second you chose map so you probably want to use that new all, all water map which is actually just the opposite side of this map is the all water map but definitely what you want to play him and black mana on uh, but anyway, then he also has uh, some pretty crazy stats there. 90 points is a lot, but yeah, eight clicks full of steel energy, 12 attacks starting off, some exploit, some invul, lots of damage reducers, get some battle fury later there. And he's also got the swim ability, so he's going to be harder to target. Uh, he's got Traded Blades Claws Fangs. When he uses it, if the hit character occupies water terrain, the minimum result is instead his printed damage value plus one. That's nuts. So he could, uh, let's see, he has a three almost his whole dial, so it's going to be minimum four on the blades with the exploit too. Then he's got Charge. When Killer Croc uses it, if he occupies water terrain before moving, you may place him in a square of water terrain within four squares. So that's really cool. Um, gets you a little extra reach on your charge. And uh, yeah, just uh, if you place those water train markers correctly or if you're just playing on an all water map, he's gonna have some huge reach because you're gonna be able to place him four and he can charge at least five because he's got 10 movement. So that's essentially a nine square charge, which is nuts because that's you know over half the map at this point if we're talking like the newer maps. Uh, so yeah, he's really cool. He is kind of a lot of points, but uh, I think he is kind of worth it. If you manage to go second and pick that all water map, he's going to be a beast. He's one of the reasons I like swim teams a lot right now. Um, there's just a lot of good ones finally. So yeah, he's pretty good and he looks really fun. But up next we've got Deadshot, who in my opinion is one of the better rares of this set. It would be nice if he had like a sniper rifle or something, but... I heard some rumor that DC is like getting rid of guns out of all their toys or something. So that's probably why that is. I don't know how true that is or not, but that's just what I heard. And that makes sense, I guess, because why else would they just <laughs> give him a knife when he's got like all these range powers? Uh, but he does have the Suicide Squad TA, which we'll take a look at because that's a very not well-known TA. It says, when an adjacent friendly character is KO'd, after resolutions, you may roll a d6. If you do, heal this character equal to the result minus two, minimum one. Okay, so it's whoever has this TA, when an adjacent friendly is KO'd, they get to heal. So the other person doesn't need to have it. For some reason, I thought they did. But yeah, I mean, potentially get to heal off of this. But anyway, back to Deadshot here. He's got Gotham City, Secret Six, Suicide Squad, and Assassin keywords. Uh, he's got that target trait that we first saw back in the commons. So if you forgot, it says at the beginning of the game, for all friendly characters with this trait, give a target token to an opposing character. For all characters with this trait, when a friendly character with the Assassin keyword KOs an opposing character with the target token, score 25 
victory points. So you get to put a target on somebody. If somebody with assassin keyword KOs them, you get an extra 25 points, which is great. But then he's got improved targeting for elevated hindering and characters, which is nuts. He can see through everything but blocking. That is so strong. He's got six range, which is pretty far nowadays. Uh, considering all the other ranges have been lowered to an average of four, six is actually pretty good. But he's got sidestep, 12 attack precision strike, 18 combat reflexes, and two damage with range combat expert. So we'll actually be shooting with a 13 attack for three damage with precision. For 60 points is pretty freaking nuts, you guys. On top of that, he's got this trait here, one shot, one kill, power, range eight, make a range attack that deals penetrating damage, but only to target opposing characters with a target token, regardless of line of fire. That is crazy. So you could actually, you know, perplex up this guy's range. You would replace, then modify. So it'd be eight plus whatever you perplexed it up. He could essentially be shooting, you know, 10, 11 squares maybe. Uh, and that's, you know, you could sidestep too. So that gives him a little more reach before you take that power action. And that's regardless of the line of fire. So even with blocking and walls and everything, it doesn't matter. He can shoot through everything across the whole map and snipe somebody with a target token. It's so good. And it's penetrating damage on top of the fact that he's already got precision to help you get through super senses and range combat expert. So he's shooting for at least three Park a couple enhancements next to him. You know, he could be shooting for four or five or whatever. Pretty freaking nuts. This dude is so overpowered, but only specifically on the targets, right? And you can't really uh, get more targets unless you're also playing him with our next figure we'll look at in a second, which is Razel Ghoul, who does allow you to put a target token on somebody else once your first target has been KO'd. So they make a very strong team. Um, on the right team, this guy's super overpowered. I like him a lot. I think even, even just kind of tossing him on there, you know, even giving one person the target token, sniping them from eight squares away, um, with the, you know, through all types of terrain and everything, is pretty freaking crazy. Even if he can't pull it off multiple times, that once that one time is enough. And uh, yeah, I like him a lot. He's really freaking good. What else can I say? But like I said, up next we have Razel Ghoul, who has a pretty epic sculpt. I really like this one a lot. You know, you got a little smoke or fire kind of coming up there from the bottom. His cape just epically waving around. Got the sword and everything. He looks really freaking awesome. This is maybe my favorite Ra's al Ghul yet. Uh, so taking a look at his dial here, his card, he's got the uh, Underworld team ability so he can carry some people that share keywords with him. Uh, you've got League of Assassins, Assassin, Martial Artist, and Ruler keywords. Of course, he also has the target trait. Um, and then he has, uh, just looking at his dial, 80 points. You know, running shot, 12 attack blades, 18 defense, 3 damage. Nah, nothing too crazy there, but uh, let's take a look at what else he can do. Free, if no opposing characters have a target token, give an opposing character a target token. Friendly characters with the target trait, treat that token as if it were generated by that trait. Very good. So like I said, he just lets you, you know, once you KO that first target, you get to put it on a new one and then put it on a new one. So as long as he's alive, you can keep getting more and more targets. You can keep scoring those extra 25 points with each KO. And it really starts to rack up after a couple of them, you know, one for 25, whatever. And once you kill two and you've got 50, that's a lot of extra points. That's a whole other character, you know, not just a little minion, like a legit character. Uh, you KO three characters, you got an extra 75 points. That's a pretty big character. That's a lot of points, you know? In addition to the points you've already scored, you might be uh, close to 300 by that point already. You know, depending on how many characters your opponent has on their team, you could really s just rack up a ton of extra points. And even if they, you know, hit you back hard and wipe out a lot of your team, you might win just because you managed to get a couple of KOs that were the right target and get those extra points. So a really powerful effect, like it a lot. Uh, then you've got Mastermind, Super Senses, and Toughness on his defense, which does keep him, you know, very well defended. Just, you know, toughness is always nice to have, at least to reduce some damage. Uh, Super Senses is great to dodge stuff. And then Mastermind, if all else fails, you can just, you know, throw it on a minion, right? Uh, and then you've got Leadership and Outwit. And when Razal Ghoul uses Leadership and succeeds, you may generate a League Assassin on click number three. So he can help you uh, just generate Assassins 
that can, you know, do some things. And uh, if nothing else, they're just mastermind fodder for him. So that's really cool. So yeah, I mean, he's kind of weird. The only thing I don't like here is this weird, awkward running shot blades combo. Uh, I mean, I guess that's, you know, running shot is technically better than charge in most cases. Um, and then if they get up on you, he's got blades, you know, he's got a sword. He might as well use it, I guess. Uh, but it would be nice if it was like maybe, I don't know, Blades Precision Strike or something to give him some kind of something to use with the running shot uh, or maybe even give him Charge Running Shot as a, as a special so he's got some options. I don't know. Uh, he's great nonetheless. I would say at, on his own actually he's kind of meh. But like with the right team, with the all assassins, you know, with the target traits and everything, you know, really capitalizing on that, he's going to be crazy good. And of course, following up with the regular one, we have the prime Ra's al Ghul here, who uh, has basically the same sculpt. It's got like green fire down there, though, instead of purple. Um, I think that's about the only difference. Uh, but yeah, anyway, taking a look at his card here. We can see that he has League of Assassins, Assassin, Brute, Martial Artist, and Ruler. Uh, same keywords, I think they added Brute there. Uh, but anyway, you've got the Demon trait, Sideline Active, Other Friendly Characters with the Assassin keyword, Modify Attack plus one, Sideline Active, when another friendly character named Ra's al Ghul is KO'd, you may generate Ra's al Ghul from your sideline on click number five in the square that character last occupied. If you do, until your next turn, he has immune. Not bad. He's only 40 points. He's got 12 attack blades, 17 toughness, three damage battle fury. Uh, he's got regeneration as free, but only if he occupies water train or a square on the edge of the map. And he's got charge, flurry, and sidestep on his special movement power. So this dude was a beast in sealed. You got Charge Flurry, Sidestep, Blades, Battle Fury. Um, you got the free regen if he's in water or on the edge of the map. So even if he takes a good hit, he can just heal it right back up. Giving all other assassins plus one attack is great. And, you know, being able to come in off the sideline once your original Ra's al Ghul is KO'd is also very nice. However, there is a better prime for the assassin teams. Uh, and only being able to use one prime, you know, makes it so you probably won't end up using him too much. But he is really cool, really fun, really powerful for 45, or only 40 points, actually. Yeah, just the charge flurry, sidestep, blades, battle fury, like it does with 12 attack already, and then giving your whole team plus one, all the other assassins on your team plus one attack is great. So I mean, he could definitely still see play. He could definitely have a lot of use. Like I said, he's a monster in sealed. And I think the whole, you know, coming in off the sideline thing for Ra's al Ghul, you know, the whole like Lazarus Pit thing is really awesome, really true to the character, and I like him a lot. But up next here, we've got Lincoln March, who uh, is pretty interesting. Court of Owls dude. Uh, I think he's the one that actually spawns the Court of Owls. I like his armor. It's very cool. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at his card here. He's got Batman Enemy and uh, Underworld team abilities. Yeah, Court of Owls, Gotham City, Gotham City Underworld, Assassin, and Politician. He's also got the target trait like we've seen to get those extra points. You got uh, Hypersonic Blades Exploit to start with, some combat reflexes, and uh, yeah, pretty long dial for 80 points or for 30 points. You can start him off on that low line just with the stealth and poison and the special uh, damage power. But he does also have traded mastermind and leadership. And when Lincoln March uses leadership and succeeds, you may instead generate a Court of Owls assassin on click number three. So yeah, just like Ra's al Ghul, he's popping out those assassins. And uh, on his damage, he's got exploit and outwit. So, you know, not too bad at all. Um, I think he's pretty good just for, you know, at 30 points, he's pretty good for the outwit, the leadership, you know, popping out minions, uh, and he can carry them around too with the Underworld TA, you know, he can kind of hand out that 11 with the Batman enemy, just kind of sit in stealth and, you know, rely on the mastermind to, and stealth to keep him safe uh, and just outwit things. Not too bad. Otherwise, for the full AD, he can be running in there with hypersonic and just doing some big damage with the Blades exploit. I like the two point values on him a lot. It gives him two very different, you know, feels. He's either, you know, just getting in there and doing the work or he's kind of more the mastermind from the shadows kind of aspect. So I like him a lot. He's really cool. 
Um, for Court of Owls teams, he's going to be great. He's another strong assassin keyword character as well. You know, if you just want to throw him on there for the 30 points for that outwit, that's great. Um, and he can be just generating some, you know, more mastermind fodder kind of stuff. So yeah, overall, I like him a lot too. And up next here, we've got Amanda Waller. You know, classic Amanda Waller. She is always so freaking just crazy. <laughs> I don't know. She is something else, but uh, she's got Suicide Squad and PD team abilities, Arkham Asylum, Suicide Squad, Politician, and Spy keywords. And she's got the Bomb Collars trait that says when a friendly standard character is KO'd uh, by an opponent's attack, after resolutions, you may deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character adjacent to the last square they occupied which is very nice. It's kind of like giving mystics, right? It's a little bit different because they have to actually be KO'd and it only hits everything adjacent to them. Uh, but that's pretty awesome nonetheless. Just get some free damage in. If you're playing a team full of characters that are all close combat anyway, and they all want to run up in there and get in the fight and get in close anyway, that's going to be, you know, really strong because it's going to be a lot of free damage. Um, she's got a pretty long dial, five clicks, just full of stealth and mastermind. Um, and I think she just has leadership and outwit uh, and perplex on her first click. Uh, but she also has a sideline active trait that says at the beginning of your turn, if two or more friendly characters that share a keyword with Amanda Waller were KO'd since your last turn, you may generate Amanda Waller from your sideline into your starting area on click number one. So that's pretty cool. You know, any type of sideline active trait is always going to be good. And, uh, I mean, they have to share a keyword with her, and yet at least two of them have to be KO'd in one turn. So it is kind of hard to pull off. Uh, what does she have again? Arkham Asylum, Suicide Squad, Politician, Spy. You know, there's not a lot of great keywords there. Uh, I could definitely see it being used with Arkham Asylum or Suicide Squad, probably. Politician and Spy are fine, but... I don't really see that team being played a whole lot. I can't think off the top of my head of any good politicians or spies really uh, enough to make a team out of anyway. I'm sure there are some. But uh, yeah, I mean, Sideline Active's great. Getting a free character out is always nice. Um, it just kind of feels like I don't think she's going to turn the tide of the game for you, you know, just to get that outwit and perplex on your team. If you just lost two characters in one turn, that's a big oof. To be honest, I'd probably just play her for 40 points, just throw her on the team. You know, you get the leadership perplex and outwit for 40 points, and you get the bomb collar trait. Because, I mean, if you have to wait for two of them be to be KO'd, that's a lot of damage that she would have, you know, if she was there, that she would have been able to hit the enemy with. So, potentially. Uh, so, yeah, I'd rather just play her on the map, I think. Kind of just one of those rare instances where the sideline active might be a little too hard to pull off. You might want to just, you know, play her, actually, on the team. Um, actually, I think uh, the Mirror Master had Suicide Squad, right, from the Uncommons. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, he would probably be great to have her on the sideline for, because if he can make a couple of those guys, you know, you just get hit with one energy explosion or something, and they both die, and then, boom, she could come in, essentially, for free. That'd be cool, but that's kind of the best way I can think to get her out off the sideline. But anyway, she's really good, and I think most of the time I would just play her for the 40 points. All right, up next we've got Mr. Freeze, who uh, looks pretty freaking awesome. I love the effect coming off of him there, the, like, cold, I guess, coming off of his back. He's got that cool freeze ray and everything. Yeah, he looks freaking awesome. Uh, one of the better looking Mr. Freezes, I'd say. And then taking a look at his card here, he's got the uh, Batman enemy TA, of course. Arkham Asylum, Gotham City Underworld, Injustice League, Suicide Squad, Armor, and Scientist keywords. Frozen Earth. At the beginning of the game, generate two ice blocking train markers in any squares, at least three squares from a map edge. This game, those markers have adjacent characters must roll breakaway to move if they don't already. If you're not the first player, generate four instead. Very cool. So uh, potential to generate four blocking terrain markers to slow your opponent down. Uh, probably, well, they have to be at least three squares from a map edge, so eh, you can't just kind of block them in, I guess. But that doesn't follow the rules of like terrain placement. You know, like if you, for the train you actually bring to place, this is like its own thing. So you could kind of block off some movement ways, you know, make them go around or shoot it out or something, slow them down basically. Not too bad. Uh, you got running shot, 11 attack, 18 invul, and 3 damage outwit for 80 points. 
Or for 50, you got some sidestep barrier and range combat expert. Not too bad. Then his other trait here, when an opposing character fails a breakaway roll after resolutions, deal them one penetrating damage. Oof, that's nasty. So we definitely don't want to try to break away from those ice markers because they could take some damage for it. Then you've got end cap, and when Mr. Freeze uses it after resolutions, deal each hit character damage equal to their action tokens. That's great. I love end cap that can deal damage. End cap by itself feels kind of meaningless sometimes. Sometimes it can be really powerful. If you time it just right, you know, you got like a triple target end cap or something, you like get a bunch of your opponent's team double tokened, and they don't happen to have leadership next to them or any willpower or anything, then it can have a big impact still. But I feel like that kind of stuff happens more in like sealed and in pulp and stuff. At more higher competitive levels, that's not really gonna <laughs> that's not really gonna happen very often. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love in cap that deals damage because you're still getting that damage in, and you know why not give them a token on top of it? That's great. So yeah, I really like this Mr. Freeze. Um, I don't think he's anything super crazy overpowered, but I think he's a really just solid version of Mr. Freeze. Like he screams Mr. Freeze to me. You know, he's got in cap that hurts them. He makes ice and makes them break away. If they fail break away, they get hurt from that too. Like he's just doing a lot of cool things. Uh, get it? Cool things. <laughs> he's got triple target for the in cap too, which is awesome. You know, I don't know. I like him a lot. Uh, we've got some pretty good Mr. Freezes recently though, but this one is up there for sure. Up next though, we've got Strix, who's another Court of Owls assassin kind of character here. Very cool. Love the. Uh, katana and about to strike pose and everything very neat anyway she's got actually batman ally team ability birds of prey court of owls gotham city secret six assassin martial artist and past keywords she also has the target trait that we've seen uh for 60 points uh we'll take a look at her specials here on the back she's got shape change traded and when she uses it if an opposing character uh, has a target token, increase the result plus one. So it's just if an opposing character has a target token, increase the result plus one. That's interesting. For some reason, the first time I read that, I remember it saying, like, if the attacking character or something has the target token. So just any opposing character, if they have a target token, you get plus one to the roll. That's great. And then on her uh, movement power, she's got charge. When she uses it after moving, you may place her in a square of hindering terrain within four squares line of fire. Uh, interesting. When she uses it after moving, you may place her in a square of hindering. So that reads to me like you can essentially charge half your movement then place her four squares away in hindering because that's after moving not after resolutions right and then make the attack from the charge so she could potentially have a really long reach with the charge like an eight square charge kind of thing uh, which is pretty nuts you got some precision and some exploit not bad for 60 points you know she's got stealth there from the batman ta uh, and that shape change that's probably going to be like plus one all the time anyway so yeah she's really good uh really strong little close attacker there for your assassin teams and cordoval teams she seems pretty solid but up next we've got the talon which is the main one the main version of her you're probably going to be playing uh, the prime version here. She is so good for assassin teams. It's actually pretty crazy So she's got uh, the underworld TA to carry people birds of prey court of owls Gotham City assassin and martial artist Of course the target trait we've seen again 60 points running shot 12 attack prob some super senses and uh, traded shape change and stealth as well as regeneration as free with no stipulations there at all. Just regen as free. That's pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, it means stealth, super senses, and shape change with prob and free regen means she's going to be pretty hard to hit and pretty hard to, you know, take down. Uh, and then you've got her special attack power that says, when a friendly character with the assassin keyword attacks, opposing characters with a target token can't use defense powers. And that is the main reason I was saying earlier that we might not really be playing the Prime Raz Al Ghul very much, because this is nuts. 
then you also have friendly characters with the Court of Owls keyword have safeguard opposing prob control. That's just a nice thing to toss in there. Um, you know, if you're playing her on an assassin team, she might be your only Court of Owls. If you're playing her on a Court of Owls team, giving the whole team protected opposing prob is pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, running shot, 12 attack, and prob is great offensively. You got stealth, super senses, shape change, prob defensively. Yeah, she's going to be great. Free regen if she takes a hit. She can carry people around with her. And that special attack power, you're going to want to keep her tucked away in stealth so they don't outwit that attack power because that gives your whole team such a powerful effect against any of the targets that they just can't use uh, defense powers when they're attacked. So like the dead shot we took a look at earlier, you know, on top of the fact that he already has precision and deals penetrating damage, his special eight range shot that can see through everything doesn't need light of fire. Uh, they also can't use defense powers if he's shooting the target. So no defense powers at all, which is great because that also gets through, you know, power cosmic and all that crazy stuff. And yeah, he just hits them for like three damage instantly every time. Super strong. And if you play her with the rare Raz al Ghul to, you know, move the target token around, you can keep just benefiting from that. So no defense powers also means no stop clicks on certain characters. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. Uh, I think assassin teams definitely have some potential between her, Raz al Ghul, and uh, Deadshot. Just really, really strong overall. I really like them a lot. I can't wait to try out an assassin team. I've got an assassin team build coming out soon for you guys to check out. But yeah, she's just a really powerful prime for assassin teams. Moving right along though, we have the Saturn Queen, who, uh, you know, looks pretty cool there. I gotta admit, I don't really know too much about these characters. There's like Saturn Queen and Cosmic King and something else. Uh, they're from... I think that storyline with the Batman and Superman that were evil, the absolute power or whatever. So yeah, <laughs> but anyway, she's got Legion of Supervillains and future keywords. She's got that team player team ability, 170 or 40 points. And she's got a trait that says probability control when she uses it. She may count squares and range and line of fire from a friendly character with the Legion of Supervillains keyword. If she is 100 points, she can use prob twice a turn. And then our damage power, she has shape change, and when she uses it and succeeds after resolutions, deal the attacker one penetrating damage. So you gotta love that 100 point line with the uh, 19 defense double rollouts, one of which does damage to the attacker and double prob on top of that as well. It's crazy. 12 attack precision strike and some mind control with a seven range double target. So she's mainly just gonna be mind controlling stuff she only does a two damage most of her dial till the very end where she bumps up to like a three and a four there with a 10 attack so she goes all out i guess trying to blast people um i mean i think let's see for 40 points mind control penetrating blast you got the shape change in the mastermind not bad 70 points like 70 points is okay but i feel like if you're playing 70 points you might as well just go all the way to 100 at that point um, I could kind of see playing her for 40 just for the prob and the mind control and penetrating blast and stuff like that. She'd be decent for 40. I think 100 or 40 is where it's at. You either fully commit to 100, which um, I do know uh, the champion of Team Worlds this year, Antonio, he uh, kept singing the praises of this figure, saying how great she was basically carried him to victory or something so uh she must be pretty good i haven't i have no i have tried her out one time in one of my random battle royales at worlds and uh i can't say she did as well for me unfortunately but uh she definitely has potential i like i said i think 100 points is pretty decent and then 40 points otherwise if you just want her there for to be able to prob through people and stuff i don't think 70 is really worth it because you might as well fully commit to the 100 at that point but yeah she's pretty interesting i think obviously like in sealed she's a beast uh constructed uh maybe not quite as much but uh you know maybe in pulp she'll probably have some potential there but up next like i said we got cosmic king here who, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't really know much about him either, but he is uh, very similar to what the, the queen does. He's got outwit, may use it, you know, to count squares of range and line of fire from friendly characters with the Legion of Supervillains keyword. If he's 100 points, he can use outwit twice. He also has Legion of Supervillains future and scientist keywords and is also a team player. Uh, yeah, 170 or 40. Um, let's take a look at his attack power here. It says free, 
choose a piece of blocking terrain within range and destroy it. After resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character that was adjacent to the destroyed terrain. Not bad. Just a free action to blow up a piece of terrain and do some penetrating damage to anybody that happened to be adjacent is pretty great, especially because he's got barrier, so he can actually barrier up and then shoot out a piece with that free action to deal some damage for free. Not bad at all. He got some sidestep with that, some leadership. I think, again, though, you probably commit to the 100 line uh, to get that 12 attack, 4 damage, 19 defense, um, and the double outwit. Otherwise, you just play him at 40 if you want to outwit stuff through people. And, uh, you know, you got some poison and some empower there. You know, the 70 point lines just feel kind of like, meh, they're fine. <laughs> but you might as well pay the extra points and commit to the 100, right? At that point. Uh, so I kind of feel similarly to uh, Saturn Queen. Like, he's going to be good and sealed. Maybe have some pulp potential. Um, you know, on the right team, if they're all Legion of Supervillains, he can be outwitting through other people. That's really strong. Um, you know, he provides that leadership that the team's going to need. And yeah, he just seem, kind of seems okay overall. I do like the free damage a lot, though. I always love free damage. Um, I could see playing him at 70 points if you wanted that to be your main strategy, is that he just runs around and blows up a piece of terrain to get some free damage in, and you wanted to save a few points because you didn't really need the outwit, the extra outwit or anything, then yeah, maybe 70 points could be used for that kind of strategy. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Overall, he's pretty decent too. All right, but now we're getting to the good stuff, you guys. Now we've got Necron, probably the strongest rare figure out of the set. Um, just for one specific reason, which we'll take a look at here. Uh, so first of all, he is Power Cosmic, so that's great. You've got Black Lantern Corpse, Deity, and Herald, uh, and Monster keywords as well. Then you've got the trait Rise, Free, Generate a Grave Hindering Terrain Marker within range and line of fire. And then Friendly Characters with the Black Lantern Corpse keyword occupying or adjacent to any friendly grave terrain markers may heal past their starting lines if healed by a character with the Black Lantern Corpse keyword. And that right there is why he is super strong because you just play him at 40 points uh, and his lowest dial and you play him with like Scott Porter, make him a Black Lantern, um, or the other Scott Porter that has all the keywords and that can be equipped with the purple ring for free. And then they can both use support to heal up your team. And yeah, they just heal right up uh, from their lowest starting line. And you get like essentially a ton of free points on your team because <laughs> they're all healed up way stronger than they should be. It's pretty nuts. Um, but yeah, then you've got improved targeting hindering. You know, he starts at 40 points with the sidestep blades, invuln, and prob. Doesn't really matter because literally turn one, you can have him top dial for 40 points. Look at this whole dial you could have for 40 points with ease. Uh, you've got stealth, 12 attack, penetrating blast, 19 invincible, 4 damage exploit, giant size. Um, you know, to be honest, I could almost see playing this guy. He's not unique or anything crazy enough. I could see just playing a couple of this guy and a couple of Scott Porters and just healing them all up. You know, this guy's giant size. He sees through hindering. Uh, giant size is going to let him see through most other stuff. Seven range. Um, you could sidestep him up if you wanted to move him a little bit at first. Uh, you got the free grave train markers he's generating constantly. So, I mean, yeah, this dude is just so nuts. Power Cosmic, so he can't be outwitted and everything. Like, he's so strong. It's crazy. He's obviously an auto-include on any Black Lantern strategies, uh, whether it be a full Black Lantern team or like a monster or herald team that is mostly Black Lanterns. You're definitely going to see this guy. Like I said, I could see playing two or three of him because he's just so insanely good. Um, but also, there's a lot of other insanely good ones. <laughs> so... You know, there's like the Chase Batman, Black Lantern Batman for 40 points is arguably even better than this guy for 40 points. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously 10 out of 10 figure, you're going to see him in the meta for sure. Uh, maybe he might even make a splash in Pulp too. You never know between him and Black Hand. We'll see what else we get maybe. Um, that'd be very interesting. But yeah, just super good figure. So strong. But up next, we've got one of my favorite sculpts in the set, Poison Ivy. All those vines coming out and everything. 
looks super awesome. And this is Poison Ivy from uh, the Harley Quinn animated series, which they always do a great job looking like they come straight out of the series is awesome. Uh, she's got the Batman enemy team ability, Arkham Asylum, Gotham City, Underworld, Herald, and Scientist keywords. A lot of great keywords right there. Um, BFF GFFs, free, make an attack targeting an opposing character that attacked Poison Ivy or another friendly character with the Gotham City Underworld keyword since your last turn. When Poison Ivy attacks a character that damaged a friendly character named Harley Quinn since your last turn, modify her attack and damage to plus one. Very strong there. So yeah, uh, for 80 or 50 points, She's incredibly strong. Uh, part of it is that trait there that gives her a free attack, kind of like a retaliation effect. But then she also has a trait here that uh, the first time Poison Ivy would be KO'd, instead turn her to click number 9 and KO any number of friendly Thorn Vine bystanders. Heal Poison Ivy one click for each Thorn Vine bystander KO'd this way. <laughs> That's so annoying. Uh, so like it just gives her a second life. And uh, no matter what, she can come back on click number 9. And then you can KO any of your vines that she's made throughout the game to be healed up some. So she won't just instantly be killed again. So that's very strong. And then on her attack power, she's got that free generate a thorn vine bystander max four in a square within range and line of fire. So not even just generate adjacent, but within range and line of fire is super strong. She does have a four range. So that's a pretty good, you know, range to be generating them. Uh, I think 80 points is where it's at with her because of the, you know, for one, you got more movement, more attack, um, and you got the empower is big because these things have um, like an eight attack, two damage with exploit and flurry, and they got the Batman enemy TA. So you're going to want to make them adjacent to her anyway, most of the time. So yeah, that way she'll be uh, bumping them up to an 11 attack with her, you know, Batman enemy TA. And then with the empower, she's bumping them up to like a three damage with exploit on the flurry. So yeah, she just full moves eight squares hopefully sit in stealth somewhere, free pop out a vine, that vine then takes an action to, you know, flurry with 11 attack, 3 damage, exploit weakness, and yeah, <laughs> pretty crazy. And then if she gets attacked or one of your other characters gets attacked, she gets a free attack on somebody, which is nuts because she just gets that retail. And if it was Harley Quinn that got attacked, then she gets plus one attack and damage when she does it. Um, and then when she's KO'd, she can get brought back, potentially heal up a bunch of clicks if you're willing to sacrifice some vines, and just go back to it again. So yeah, she's super crazy. Definitely going to make a splash in Pulp. She's going to be a huge meta figure for Pulp, for sure. I think she could see some meta play outside of Pulp, like like a little bit. I could see people trying her out at least, because I think she's just that good. I don't think she's going to be winning worlds or anything. Pulp worlds, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, she's really, really strong. I like her a lot. This is maybe my favorite Poison Ivy ever, in fact. All right, you guys. Last but not least for the rares, we have... One of my other favorite rares, ending strong these last few rares, we got Black Adam, who just looks amazing. Sculpt is really great on this guy, with the lightning effects and everything. And this guy is just a monster in sealed. It's like an unstoppable beast almost. Uh, but yeah, you've got Mystics and Power Cosmic, two of the most powerful team abilities in the game. You've got uh, Justice Society, Legion of Doom, Secret Society of Supervillains, Sinestro Corps, Deity, Mystical, Past, Ruler, and Warrior keywords. Basically every keyword you could possibly shove on his card. Um, Sinestro Core is great because I can get him the ring for free as well as getting him those constructs for free. That's really powerful on top of everything else he can normally do here. So his first trait here, when Black Adam uses Mystics, he also deals one penetrating damage to each opposing character within three squares of the attacker. That's really strong. Not only is that spread out the Mystics damage amongst their team, it also is like a double Mystics damage to the one that actually hit you because it's also deals one penetrating to each opposing character within three squares of the attacker. And the attacker is an opposing character within three squares of himself. So he'll take another penetrating on top of it. That's pretty nuts. Then you've got invincible and friendly characters within range and line of fire can use mastermind, but only to choose Black Adam regardless of adjacency. 
<laughs> characters within range of line of fire. That's crazy. He's got four range um, to just mastermind onto him. And then he gets to hit him with the mystics. Uh, he's got improved movement, destroys blocking. And uh, I think he's got, no, he's got the mystics and the power cosmic. So yeah, uh, nine movement hypersonic and flight that destroys blocking on the movement. 12 attack, super strength, four damage, close combat expert. So we're talking, you know, 13 for five punching somebody with some knockback from the super strength. Uh, two straight clicks of that invincible mastermind special thing for 200 points. Well worth it, I'd say. But then for 100 points, he's got charge, quake, uh, one click top dial of that invincible special and some outwit. So, you know, it's still worth it. He's still, you know, definitely putting in work there. But uh, man, that, that top dial 200 is so tempting. Uh, if you pull him in seal, definitely play him at 200 because he's just a beast. Um, if you're playing him at pulp, I think he definitely has some pulp potential too because he's just so strong for the points. Even 200 points, you know, throw a bunch of cheaper characters on there that can just mastermind onto him and... Uh, Get a ton of free Mystics damage in there. So, yeah, I think he's got a ton of potential. And if not, he's really fun. This is one of my favorite versions of Black Adam we've ever gotten. Uh, except for maybe, like, the Prime one from a while back. Uh, but, yeah, this one's really freaking great, too. Yeah, you gotta love it. I'd say, overall, the rares in this set are really freaking amazing. Uh, there's a few kind of whatever ones. But, uh, for the most part, they're all really great. Um, they're all, I would say they're all just kind of niche. They all have their own niche use. Um, you know, we got the ones that are really good for swim teams, the ones that are really good for assassins. Um, you've got like the one that's really good for Black Lanterns, the, there's some good for like, you know, Suicide Squad stuff, etc. Ivy was kind of better for Gotham City Underworld teams for her retaliation stuff. So they all kind of have their niche use, but I think, you know, when playing them on the right team, they're all going to be very powerful. And yeah, uh, just really good rares overall this set. So let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash that like button. It does help me out a lot. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. But if you'd like to help support the channel even more, check the links in the description for the Patreon or hit that join button down there for the YouTube memberships. Either way, for as little as $1 a month, you get entered into our monthly Patreon giveaways and see your name here in the credits with all these other awesome people. But that's going to do it for this one, you guys. Thanks again so much for watching. And until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters, signing off.